it's Sam Burt here for Sample Library View and today we're going to be checking out Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road Orchestra Cellos which are the latest addition to their flagship line. It brims with the authentic sound of cinema, emotive, lush, detailed and incredibly playable. Like the percussion in the first violins previously, this group of 10 cellos was recorded at the iconic Abbey Road Studio One by Simon Rhodes, using the best mics and outboard you could wish for. There are 25 articulations, including a number of deep legato variations, 16 microphone options, and they'll be dialing the desired amount of detail and ambience for a truly widescreen experience. It also makes it ideal for creating pop mixes, vintage styles, and close focus mixes. It's worth noting that the library has a dual tiering system, offering pro and core versions, with the former having many more mic choices and extended techniques, particularly in the legatos. For this demonstration, we have the pro version loaded up. Abbey Road Orchestra Cellos has 25 articulations with eight different legato types. There are alternative attacks, adaptable releases, 16 mic signals, including two Simon Rhodes mixes. And it's available in the Spitfire player for AU, VST, VST3, and AAX. There are two tiers available with the pro coming in at 92 gigabytes and costing $309, and the core at four gigabytes and at $189. I'll go through the legato articulations first, only using the main Mix 1 mic, with no reverb added and the default recommended release value. I've tied the vibrato to the mod wheel for ease of playing, though it can be independently controlled of course. The legato offset is at 100% for minus 100 milliseconds, and the tightness is on 100% also for a 40 millisecond delay across the whole library. I'm using the Pro version here, not all features demonstrated are available in the core, so check the website for the differences. The Performance Legato Extended utilises all five of the Legatos included. There's Portamento, there's a Slurred or Fingered, a Detache or Bowed, Allegro which is Quick Slurred and Runs which are Super Quick Slurred. The Legato employed at any one moment happens automatically according to either user velocity or your playing speed for the three slurred types. Certain velocity layers blur the Portamento and Detache transitions using a standard slurred Legato blended with them. The attacks on new phrases can be soft, standard, or more pronounced macato, all dictated by note on velocity. In this performance patch, there's also a staccato that's triggered by quickly playing high velocities, all adding to the ability of the library to be able to respond to the composer's intentions instantly. All the longs of the library have two round robins, which is great for repeated notes, and the runs expand this to four for added realism. As you can hear there, there's so much variety and emotional impact in just a single patch, and it really does pay off to carefully edit after playing notes in if you want to really make the most of the subtleties. There's another extended patch named Lyrical Legato. Now for this one, the Legatos exhibit more relaxed transitions, making it the best choice for slower playing. 
And because of that, it lacks the runs legato and staccatos. Both of these patches also come in non-extended versions. They still employ a degree of automatic legato optimization, but not the portamento and detache options, and without the alternative attacks. As a consequence, they're less CPU and RAM heavy. And that can help depending on the individual's own setup. If you don't require the detail of these two special patches, each of the five legato transitions are available as specific articulations that employ the standard attack the detache which uses a stronger Mercato attack each time. Fading of vibrato and the smoothness of the various legato types results in just superb realism and makes this library very flexible in use. When you also consider that the intervals have three dynamic layers in addition to the five layers for the main notes, you have to appreciate the time and effort that's gone into creating this library by the Spitfire team and the string players. For additional control of the legato and to help for live playing, there's an offset control that can bring the interval length down from 200 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds for the performance legato to a more responsive 100 milliseconds. Unfortunately, the value is only given in percentage, so it's best to pick an obvious number to more easily calculate the offset to input into your door track. Onto the non-legato longs now, 
and the long extended patch you'll hear next has three attack options also based on velocity. The other long articulations only have the standard attack. For the long extended demo, I've got the release dialed right up to max. This controls the release sample length, which at 100% gives a very smooth and pad-like feel. For the other longs, it's at the more natural default of 60%. The measured tremolos come in two tempos and will sync to your door, so best practice is picking the one closest to the target tempo. Spitfire always seems to do the more delicate samples especially well, and those long harmonics and flautandos are really evocative. Inherently they are noisier affairs though, and with quite a bit of hiss from a high noise floor. Most want the flautandos, so that might require some user noise reduction if you need it cleaner. We are spoilt with three main shots, including a really useful spigotissimo for super sharp and powerful punch. I've configured the mod wheel here to switch between them to showcase how they can combine in complex patterns. Of particular note is the release function which goes from 4 seconds to 1 second. When this is at 100% the shots effectively act as one shots, always playing the full sample no matter the midi note length. 
down a much lower setting where I have them here. The tails are modulated to be much tighter and by only playing short MIDI notes, we therefore reduce the buildup of room ambience. This can really give clarity to quick passages and then by simply holding the key down longer on the final note, we get the full length of the sample. In practice, this method makes it sound far more realistic. To round off the shorts, we've got a strident macato, a vibrant pizzicato, and a dynamic collegno. On the macatos, I'm employing the release reduction again, as they tend to show up the differences in length of note even better than the previous examples. For ease of playing, especially on the shorts, it's best to set the tightness here to 100% for a minus 40 millisecond start offset. If desired, you can then roll it back to 0% for a minus 80 milliseconds delay and match the offset in your door to ensure you're not missing any of the attack portion of the samples. By the Coleño, all six of these shorts have at least five dynamic layers. As you can hear, that gives them huge scope to go from dainty to full-on action scene-esque power, all with a seamless blend between layers. Five round robins across all the shorts keep everything lively and very realistic, and there are options to use neighbouring round robins and to layer them for more special timbres. The shorts also reveal the most about the room and really showcase the grandiose ambience of Abbey Road Studio One. A huge range of room tone is possible here with 16 wonderful mic signals including two separate full mixes from head engineer Simon Rhodes which are ideal for a quick start and to keep RAM down. I've got a short subtly changing ostinato phrase here that illustrates each mic in turn. Look out in the bottom left info panel for more information on each mic selection. Here are the main more typical mics. <laughs> Thank you. 
as good as these traditional mic positions sound, one of the special features of Abbey Road Orchestra is the addition of some specialist mic options. We've got the less roomy and more centrally panned pop mics, retro-inspired vintage ribbon pairs, a spot on the section leader for drier focus, and even a spill mix which catches information from the spot mics of other sections. It's worth mentioning that all of the close and spot mics have full control of panning and stereo width, so you can get them precisely where you want. certainly a lot of mics in total but each one really does have a distinct and usable character and the recording quality is simply stellar throughout although there are many options i found you get best results from just combining two or three of these when you start adding many more it's a bit like mixing all the colors in the paint palette and ending up with a rather ill-defined brown abbey road orchestra cellos is housing spitfire's own player and we've been through most of the interface actually during the various demos but it's worth briefly pointing out a few things in the top right here, we find some settings and preferences with useful features such as velocity compression and keyboard response. In the main interface, the effects tab will bring up all the parameters available for each articulation and effectively mirrors what goes on in the big knob. It does beg the question of why they can't move the effects up to the top and maybe get rid of that big knob so we can see and access all controls whether we are on the mic or the articulation page below or at least make that big knob a big fader as circular movements are not that mouse friendly at all. To the right of the articulation page, there are a plethora of configurable options to set things like key switching and the number of round robins. It's all highly customizable, which is good as with so many mics and articulations, it can get pretty ram heavy. So by clicking this pencil icon here, we can only load in the patches we need. Mics can then be easily loaded and unloaded from ram we can save it as a user patch to be later recalled from the preset browser at the top of the interface. The first impressions of the library is just how enjoyably playable it is and when an instrument responds so well with such a beautiful tone that really helps in the creative process. The vibrato is super smooth as is the crossfade and across five dynamic ranges and the ability to adjust the release, tightness and legato offset is very welcome to add further control. Abbey Road Cellos really excels at full bodied and lush legato lines and has some powerful shots too. On the lighter side, the pizzicatos bounce energetically and the flautando makes it easy to create an emotive hazy pad of low end. End users should be aware it's not quite as expansive in the number of articulations as in other Spitfire offerings. Instead, they've put the focus on deep sampling the ones most used in traditional scoring, especially the legato. I prefer the Spitfire player to contact, not least it's much easier on the eyes. The only aspect perhaps not quite as good as Native Instruments famous sampler is the relatively slower load times which can take a while even on my NVMA RAID setup. The playing and recording has a classy sheen throughout and manages to be detailed whilst retaining plenty of film score gravitas too. It seems to be a less wet sound and with more clarity compared to Spitfire's Air Studio libraries and with plenty of close mic options also perhaps more versatile. Certainly it can work for lavish pop productions retro inspired cues and more intimate moments alongside the typical modern cinematic style it excels at. These cellos sound so lush, it does leave me pondering whether this library even needs layering with another as many of us are in the habit of doing with other samples that arguably lack the completeness on offer here. Do I want to smear the nuance of the legato types with something else that only has one standard legato option? Only time and contextual use will tell I guess. Abbey Road Orchestra Cellos is up there with the best of them and arguably presents us with the greatest sampled legato cello we've ever heard. Of course, such quality comes at a price and although it's much cheaper than the first violins, perhaps down to having less players to pay royalties to, it's a sizable investment for just a single instrument. With that in mind, the core is an alternative option for those on a tighter budget. You still get that lovely sound just with fewer of their more specialist features and mics. 
those shopping for the Pro version is best viewed as a very high-end main workhorse library and would be a savvy investment for something that would have regular use for many years to come. Indeed, the beautiful sound of the cellos here is truly timeless. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of Abbey Road cellos. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases and Don's weekly deal compressor. Our website, samplelibreview.com, has hundreds more reviews and at the moment features a really handy A to Z reference page for all the holiday sales currently going on.